ailment, uh, injury. That's the first level of healing that has to go on. And uh, science and, and modern day medicine have become very good at helping to heal at that level. But as many uh, people understand, some don't, particularly uh, much of science does not really understand. Although they are starting to, uh, there are other levels of healing that have to go on. There's healing in the psychological level. That is often where the root of the illness uh, comes from. Uh, or it could be self-perpetuating. In other words, a wound that is physical also takes its toll psychologically. And so often the focus is so much on the physical that the psychological gets overlooked. And that's starting to change as people start to understand more about these things, uh, as more awareness uh, of uh, uh, situational diseases such as PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, and um, uh, mental illnesses in general become more uh, understood or accepted, healing at that psychological level now begins to get more focus. And then finally, the top level, of course, is healing at the spiritual level. That is much more difficult to, uh, for uh, materialistic, uh, or our materialistic society to uh, come to grips with and have an understanding of. Uh, particularly energy healing. The fact that energy healing has been around for centuries. The concept of spiritual healing has been around for thousands of years. Thousands of years. Much of it is rooted in the understanding of chakras, which go back to ancient Hindu texts. Working with chakras, working with energies. Uh has shown remarkable, I mean remarkable, uh, effectiveness in studies. However, the scientist, scientific method as we know it today uh, is ultimately inadequate for studying these kinds of phenomena, just as it is uh, inadequate for studying uh, phenomena that occurs uh, in uh, intuition between people, uh, uh, psychic abilities. Uh, so many studies have been done and shown uh, amazing correlations. But for two reasons. Number one, uh, a, a deep bias against even having a belief in this kind of thing. Number two, uh, the fact that, as I mentioned, the scientific method as we know it uh, is not uh, uh, effective enough to study uh, these kinds of things. And the reason why is the scientific method is built on the belief, which we now know to be um, fairly well false, that you can observe something objectively without affecting it. And quantum physics has shown us that indeed the opposite is true, that you are, you are creating everything. And that the observer affects what is observed. And so when we know that, we now have to rebuild a new scientific method. But nobody wants to do that because everybody's too invested in the scientific method as we know it. Even though the scientific method itself has shown itself to uh, need, well, at the very least, 
major overhaul. To understand the idea of subjective experience being something that is legitimate. But, you know, studies continue to go on and show effectiveness, but uh, many uh, in the scientific community don't want to accept it. They'll, they'll poo-poo it or dismiss it as not being uh, uh, accurate or being something that uh, is psychological rather than uh, something that has comes from uh, energy and comes from spirit. Uh, and it's it will always be that way. <clears throat> Pardon me. It will always be that way, because, simply because of the fact of the the biases and that the scientific method, as they propose it, uh, simply is inadequate to uh, help us understand human potential in that way. But uh, you know, keep going, keep doing it. It will, it will break through. Anyway, uh, I digress quite a bit here. Um, but just a couple of things about energy healing and, and how that relates to racial healing, because that's what it really is. It's about eliminating these false beliefs. And we can only do that through the use of our uh, awareness and our energy. So in uh, energy healing, <clears throat> chakras are used there are seven energy centers in the body seven chakras uh, and each of those chakras uh, has to do with a, a, a different part of the human experience uh, the lowest chakra uh, which is uh, in the, uh, the basically the groin area that is uh, that has to do with our basic instincts, our animal drives, if you will, our uh, fight or flight response, our need to survive, all of those things. Up in the solar plexus, that's our ego. That's our sense of self of who we are or, or lack of sense of self too. And the heart chakra takes us beyond that ego and connects us to the world, to others. It connects us with our feelings, but also connects us with the world. Now the throat chakra is our expression, our self-expression. how we express ourselves, what we say, our conversations, our words, and how they affect our world and our healing. Uh, the eyebrow area, that's another chakra. That's our thoughts. Positive thoughts, we know, can do a lot for the body, as can negative thoughts. as well as how we experience the world. And our crown chakra, crown chakra at the top of the head, that's where we are connected to that which is beyond uh, the metaphysical, if you will, or the highest level of consciousness, if you want to. If you don't have a belief or, or uh, have a, a problem with metaphysics or a belief of something beyond the body, you can think of it as the highest level of consciousness, becoming completely aware, uh, as evolved as a human being can possibly be. That's where the, that's what's, that's what's going on in the crown at chakra. So each of these has a level that needs to be worked with. <clears throat> when we are eliminating false beliefs, I believe we want to start with the heart chakra because that connects us. That gives us the empathy. And once we get the empathy, 
we can begin to speak words of truth. And when we begin to speak words of truth, we begin to eliminate false ideas and change our thoughts. <clears throat> and that helps us to evolve to the highest level we can be. <clears throat> Uh, so, as far as racial healing is concerned, that's what needs to happen. The elimination of these beliefs. And thanks to the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, we have an actual program focused on this. It's called Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation. And you can find out about it uh, at the website, www.wkkf.org. Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation. Um, actually, I will post those websites up. There's a number of them connected to that. They're all connected with this truth, racial healing, and transformation. It was launched in 2016 and uh, is a comprehensive national and community-based process to plan for and bring about transformational and sustainable change, uh, addressing the historic and contemporary effects of racism. It seeks to unearth and jettison the deeply held and often unconscious beliefs created by racism. The main one being the belief in a hierarchy of human value. In 2017, uh, the Kellogg Foundation supported truth, racial healing, and transformation processes in 14 different communities. Uh, the state of Alaska, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Buffalo, New York, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas. Los Angeles, California, Richmond, Virginia, Selma, Alabama, St. Paul, Minnesota, Battle Creek, Michigan, Flint, Michigan, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and Lansing, Michigan. Kellogg is based in uh, Battle Creek, I believe, so that probably is uh, why so much focus on, on the Michigan area. And they established a day of racial healing. Uh, most recently, the last one was uh, last month, January the 22nd. And they have all kinds of videos on the conversations that were had around the world. I'm going to post that on my website as well. The website is uh, Metaphysical Media on Facebook. So just go to facebook.com, type in metaphysical media, and you will come to my page, metaphysical media. Uh, or also, actually, um, actually type in H. Wilkinson Media, H. W. I. L. K. I. N. S. O. N. Media. And it will take you to the metaphysical media page where you will find uh, past episodes of this show and these websites that I'm telling you about. So what they're trying to do uh, is create a summit for truth, racial healing, and transformation. Uh, they refer to it as a multi-year national and community-based effort to engage communities, organizations, and individuals from multiple sectors across the United States in racial healing and addressing present-day inequities linked to the historic and contemporary beliefs in a hierarchy of human value. And there are resources and guides at racialequityresourceguide.org. 
and 